taking a shift in how I approach this subject, I've covered how Jesus is God and man at the same time, fully God and fully man, how he had to become a man to die and to raise from the dead, to put away sins, to mediate and intercede on our behalf and bring us to heaven. However, my approach is now focused on how Jesus has demonstrated things for us as a man. Now, he's demonstrated how spiritual life is lived out as a man. Amen. And it's a worthy thing to emphasize how Jesus Christ has actually lived out everything that God wants to see in us. Right. Jesus Christ has shown us how to make it to the end. What God put in us is seen in Jesus. Now, when I am to act on what the Lord says regarding overcoming the world, I can be assured of this, that Jesus Christ has done it, and therefore I can do it with him. Amen. What I desire for you to see today is that Jesus, as a man, has overcome the world, and that with him, we do this also. Now, I read that those who overcome the world are those that believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But what does, that, what does Jesus say about this? Before we attempt to do this ourselves, we must remember there is a man in heaven saying, I did it. And he's encouraging us to do it. it is, is it not natural to subject ourselves to the one who is greatest? Who are we more likely to fear, reverence, obey, follow, listen to? Is it not the one we deem to be greatest and above all others? By overcoming the world, Jesus shows us we have no reason to fear it. He will actually elevate you out of a state of fear. When it says, Scripture says, at what time I am afraid, Jesus can elevate you out of that. He can. Remember that. I overcame the world. That elevates you. Raises. There will be times where you have to, you'll have to have that word. Why art thou downcast on my soul? But Jesus brings you out of it. That's the point. He experienced weariness too. And he rose above it. The world was not strong enough to beat Jesus. And God will not allow any in his hand to be beaten by it as well. But let's be clear on this. Jesus not only showed he is greater than the world, it is not a slight greatness. But there is actually no comp competition between him and the world. The world did not almost beat Jesus. Jesus did not overcome the world by winning more rounds than the world did. He overcame in all areas. Likewise, Jesus enables you to triumph over all opposition, He showed us living by faith does work. Amen. If you think living by faith doesn't work, show us where faith failed Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Well, he showed us with what he gives us, it works. Amen. This sheds new light on looking unto Jesus, which we've read. That's why we run the race. We look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Well, let's look more into that. Whenever you read something from the Lord that requires action, you can look unto Jesus and see how this is done. For example, Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. See, that requires you to look to Jesus. He also says this, Put, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. That requires you to look unto Jesus. Even look at the parables Jesus spoke. He spoke a parable about a man who gave talents to his servants. He went to a faraway country. He came back. He found faithful servants that did well with what they were given. And he gave them he rewarded them with cities, making them rulers. Did Jesus not prove himself to be a faithful servant? Yeah. Yes. He's a demonstration of his own parable. Yeah. He came to do the will of God, and now he's highly exalted at the right hand of God yeah. with a name that is above every name. Jesus shows you how rewarding it is to subject yourself to the will of God. Yeah. It's very rewarding. And we trust we know we're not talking about like health and wealth stuff. That's a, that's a big downgrade. It's a shame. I'm talking about riches and glory, treasures in heaven. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Talking about crown of life, garments of white, being able to eat of the tree of life. That's what I'm talking about. Living for God is very rewarding. Jesus proved it. Amen. See, Jesus, he showed you what victory is like too. He demonstrated this is what victory looks like in heaven. And you can partake of that. There are other things I will touch on throughout the series, but... I think you get the point. Jesus demonstrated how new life works. Amen. And that life is in all who believe he is the Christ. But we must ask, what does it mean to overcome the world? And what is meant by even world? There's a lot of things that can mean. 
I'll touch that on two different areas. There's the world itself, like as an environment, and then there's what's in the world. Mm -hmm. He overcame in all these areas. We must look to Jesus to understand what we're up against. Because remember, he said, he hated me before he hated you. So if you want to know what's against you, well, look what was against Jesus. That same opposition is against you on account of the fact that you're in him. Yes. Amen. Nothing thwarted Jesus or hindered him from fulfilling what the Father wanted him to do. Nothing stopped him. He came to put away sin by giving up his life for the sin of the world. But who stopped him? Let's look at what Jesus faced in the world. And I'm going to start with just the world as an environment, like as a system. Love not the world. We have that text. The whole system of this world is against God. And this is owing to the sin entering into the world on account of Adam's sin by one act of disobedience, as a matter of fact. Sin entered the world in death by sin. That's, that's where it made its entrance for the first time. And it just took over, you could say just took over now everyone's engulfed in it the world therefore is not in harmony with god it is a place where men are encouraged to live for themselves and not think about god at all it is a place where sin can be expressed and increase it is a place that satan is the god of though not superior to god himself he can roam free in this world and devour men it is a place where men are enslaved to sin and need freedom from bondage it is a place that lies in wickedness in the world are these three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And Jesus overcame all three when tempted. Amen. The course of this world did not sweep Jesus away. Because Mary says you walked according to the course of this world at one point. Well, Jesus wasn't swept away with that course. He went against that course and prevailed in the end. He ascended out of this world without its stench on him. He maintained harmony with God in a world that rejected God. He lived for God in a world that promoted self, and he knew no sin in a world that was filled with sin. Jesus overcame just the whole order of this world, which is in opposition of God. None of it, none of it turned him away. But let's look at what's in the world. Jesus encountered sinful men. And by sinful, I don't speak generally, I speak more specifically of wicked men who sought to deter his purpose. Even hypocrites who sinned while wearing God's name. Men tempted him with questions, tried to find something to accuse him of. They, he was, they, they tried to push this, that he was in alignment with Beelzebub, that he was in violation of the law given by Moses, and tried to provoke him with subtle, dishonest questions, which were just petty attempts to get him to stumble or word something, or something some way to get in the door and just take him down. But they couldn't find an area of weakness in him. Despite the many efforts, Jesus didn't lose to any man that stood against him. Yeah. He shut all their mouths with superior spiritual reasoning and could show them for the frauds that they were. And this, this should encourage you because we deal with a lot of these kind of people in the world. We have trouble with men. Sometimes it's hard to shut a man's mouth. But this isn't, you just don't have trouble with these people. Particularly, I encourage those in the social networking who have had the famous hundred comment threads, can't get this guy to just back down. Jesus doesn't have those kind of. In fact, just look at how many responses it took. If, 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 that, was, if that was Jesus supposed to have like two comments, there would be no long extended. He could shut it down. Well, I'm just saying, what I'm saying is, you know that Jesus is superior to who you're facing. This person I'm having trouble with, Jesus doesn't have trouble with them. He won't. Jesus will take them down. They'll be cut down like grass. You see, the, the scriptures are like this. Soon every man will be rewarded according to his works. Every knee is going to bow and confess. So, like, don't let men trouble you. Just know Jesus, he showed you. He beat, he beat all the men that came up against him. He can beat all the ones that come against you. And ultimately, in the end, they will all be beaten. Any man who came against Christ was more likely to be humiliated than successful. They could not cause him to fall, and he stood victorious in the end. In addition to men with evil intentions, Jesus encountered unbelief while in the world. He had to deal with those with little faith. But despite this being around him, he never gave up. He never got discouraged and forsook the work, thinking it was of no use. Rather, he could raise men out of states of unbelief. Jesus overcame unbelieving environments. So he like, for example, the raising of Lazarus, he encountered unbelief when he came there. That stopped him from raising a man from the dead. He overcame that. He did. It, it was so bad, it made him weep. That's how, that's, that's how grieved he was. But he could still raise a man from the dead. He overcame that. Jairus' daughter, she's not, she's not dead, she's asleep. Men laughed at him. 
He could have just done what some men say. Well, you know what? You're not worth it. You don't deserve this miracle. No, he raised her anyway after he had them put out. Those with faith got to witness the work. It didn't stop him. Healing. They went to see to see if he's going to heal on the Sabbath day. Now, some would say, you know what? I don't want to stir up any trouble. I, I, it's, better, it's better just to keep my mouth shut. We don't want to stir up any trouble. It's, it's not worth it. Jesus thought it was worth it Amen. to heal on the Sabbath day. Amen. Doing the right thing is always worth it, regardless of its response. Amen. But that's the point. He overcame unbelief. It never overrode faith in God. It never overrode his work. It never stopped him from doing what God purposed. So be encouraged with that. But let's step it up. Jesus faced demons while in this world. Now demons, they could just take over any man they wanted. That no, But no demon could take Jesus. They cowered before him and obeyed his commands without question. These are the forces, these are the forces that are against you. So I'm bringing these up. They had no power over him. Jesus overcame more than just men. He overcame spiritual wickedness. Amen. Spiritual Amen. wickedness in high places, Jesus beat all of them. Even a legion of demons stood no chance with Jesus. Amen. Enough to kill 2,000 swine, so we know there was at least a minimum of 2,000 demons. Could have been more. <laughs> I'm inclined to think that it was more. There just wasn't enough room. Just a mere 2,000. But those who had dominance over men, like that man, Jesus had dominance over them. Amen. They were subject to him. They were afraid of him. Leave us alone. That's what the demons said when Jesus came around the corner. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. I'm here among these tombs. Well, Jesus didn't leave them alone. He cast them out. Amen. Jesus overcame even Satan, who zealously tempted him in the wilderness and tried to get him to fall. See, Satan, he threw everything he had at Jesus. And Jesus still resisted him. He came out of that wilderness a victor. You see, Satan, he seeks someone to devour. Well, he didn't devour Jesus. Satan beguiled the woman in the garden, but he didn't beguile Jesus. Amen. Satan moved David to number the people. He didn't move Jesus. Amen. Satan entered Judas. He didn't enter Jesus. Amen. Jesus bruised the head of the serpent when it came after him. And because of that, we face a defeated foe. Amen. Hence, we say, greater is he that's in you. Amen. That's the one who bruised the serpent's head. He's in you. Jesus overcame him. Jesus overcame death itself. He gave up the ghost on the cross and committed his spirit unto the Lord before passing. He was in the realm of the dead for a period, and eventually he did raise from the dead. When it was time to come back, death couldn't hold Jesus anymore. Even it had to listen to him. He will never die again now that he has risen. Eventually, he will call all of the dead out of their graves, and death itself will be cast into the lake of fire. There will be no such thing as death when Jesus comes back. Therefore, no man should fear death, for Jesus overcame even it. Amen. And for if, if there is any who fear death, just the thought of that, no, Jesus knows what that's like. He died. Jesus died. So he can even fellowship with you in that and give you peace, because he knows what it's like to make that even that transition. And so he can help you overcome the fear and anxiety that comes with that. Now, to consider what he was facing, though, separation from God. If it will, this, will, will this cup pass from me? That can be kind of a general approach to death. Let this cup pass, delay it or something. But when it's time to pass through, Jesus, he had grace to pass through what was he had to go through. And he can, in the same way, allow you to pass through even that transition, knowing you will not stay dead. Amen. That won't let their Holy One stay in hell, which is the boat of the dead as we understand it. He won't, he won't let you stay dead. It is good to emphasize the superiority of Jesus Christ. And I share these things so that you may put more trust in him and see that with him you cannot fail. But what does it mean for us? Jesus has overcome the world. What does it mean for us to overcome the world? Now some might raise these kind of questions. Jesus knew no sin. He was a man, but certainly not a sinner. That was not Jesus. Like he says, I was once a sinner, but I came. Jesus doesn't sing that. How then... Can one who has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God overcome the world? Jesus had power over all nature. He could just say the storm, stop. Peace be still, the exact wording, and stops. We, well, I don't have that kind of power. So, I mean, it's, it, look, it's, it kind of looks overwhelming if you don't look at this right. Jesus had power over the devils and his, devil and his minions. 
for we are powerless against such foes by our own power. Jesus raised from the dead and dies no more, but it's appointed unto us once to die. Jesus laid down his life. No man took it from him, his own words. But we like sheep, according to Romans 8, are slaughtered all the day long. With these things being the case, overcoming a world sounds impossible. In a real sense it is, for with men it's impossible. But with God, with God, all things are possible to him that believes. That's when we bring in that kind of talk. Okay, we got an impossible situation, but God is able. As the scriptures say, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Jesus certainly was still the son of God when he became a man, but this does not change the fact that he overcame the world as a man. So when you think in terms of temptation, Jesus really was tempted in that wilderness. There, if, he, if he really wanted it, he could have turned those stones into bread, but he, he resisted. Amen. He resisted. So, I mean, he does, he, he can't fellowship with you in this. He can touch with the feeling of our infirmities. That's what the scriptures say. So it's not like he was just this invincible Superman. He overcame in a way that you can also. So we not look at the life of Jesus and say, well, it's impossible for me. He's making you able to do it, Amen. is the point. Amen. Since he overcame the world, we can also, by virtue of him abiding in us, and us abiding in him. As the scriptures say, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, and that none who follow him can be taken out of his hand. His hand. We have the one who overcame the world on our side, leading us to glory. He's the captain of our salvation and our good shepherd, both of which are leaders. Again, the scriptures say, he that hath the son hath life. So let's be clear on the matter of faith. Those who believe on the name of Jesus have Jesus. He dwells in our hearts by faith, but not like a memory resides in the mind. He is actually in us and working through us. We are branches that are connected to the true vine, and with that comes a manifestation of divine working. With Jesus abiding in you and you abide in him, you have power to overcome the world and reach the end of your life here as a victor. You can, because of that connection. How do we overcome the world? Now consider these scriptures. Scriptures have equipped us for this. Colossians 1, 21 through 23 says, And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Listen up. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospels. That's overcoming. That's what you need right there to overcome. Which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Jesus says this in John, or excuse me, Matthew 10, 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Endure. That's how you overcome. Yes, Paul writes in Romans 12, 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See that? That be not conformed, be ye transformed. That's, that's going to help you overcome. The last one here, 1 Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So in all those texts, and there's other ones too, you see things that actually aid you in overcoming the world. And all these things are things that, ha- that Jesus causes to happen. When the branch is connected to the true vine, this is what happens. It's evident where you're connected. He can teach you to fight. Jesus can teach you to continue. He can teach you be grounded, to endure, to lay hold, and to not be conformed. Jesus can teach you all of those things. Jesus was a fighter. He has authority to teach men to do this. He fought. He resisted. He continued in the Lord's work. He endured to the end. He wasn't conformed to this world. So who better to go to? To whom else shall we go? In these verses, we see how to overcome the world. And there are other passages that show us how, but these are just examples. But none of these things are going to be done apart from Jesus Christ. What do the scriptures say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what makes all this possible. When it comes to overcoming this world, it really comes down to finishing the course. And Jesus finished. He was obedient even unto death on the cross. 
that's the furthest he had to go was that cross likewise you have a point where that's your ending point it doesn't go on forever you got to make it to that point just as he did Amen. paul said when he was about to die second timothy 4 6 to 8 if you want to read along for i am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand i have fought a good fight i have finished my course i have kept the faith henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them that love his appearing Amen. it's like almost in there you see see what's coming for you <laughs> those are the words of a man who overcame the world when his time came he still believed and he was ready to be present with the lord this is the point we must endure to when we die or when the Lord Jesus comes and we're caught up in the air, there's that possibility too. If you make it to that point, you leave this world still believing Jesus is the Christ. You're an overcomer. Amen. He was he that overcomes, but he that believes that Jesus is the Christ. You leave and that's still intact, you've overcome. Amen. And the promises of Christ to the churches will be given to you. We see here the peace that comes with knowing that you're ready. And knowing that you have overcome, you will endure when you know the victory is sure. Now in the end, those who overcome have not shipwrecked or departed from that faith that was given them. Jesus is going to be looking for faith when he comes back and he is going to find it. The ones who have faith are the ones that are still standing when he returns. They're the ones who never compromised, the ones who never the ones who left all to follow Jesus, they're the ones who died believing, whatever have it. They made it to the end. If you make it to your last day in this world and you still believe, you have overcome the world. Yeah. Yes, amen. You got around everything I threw at you. But just know, in those times when you feel overwhelmed, discouraged, or tempted to quit, remember that Jesus himself passed through this same world yes. and won. Remember that he has brought many other brothers and sisters yes. through this same world and gave them strength to overcome what was before them. So this overcoming we're reading about, it's not like we've never witnessed this in our fellow brethren. It's not like this is a foreign thing. Wonder what that's like. We've seen it in Jesus Christ, but we've seen the result of his overcoming in others. We've seen Jesus work this out. Strength to overcome what was before them. My own grandfather being one as of late, he was ready. He overcame the world. One of the main things you want to keep in mind though, is that while Jesus did overcome the world, he overcame much harder things than what you have to endure. We suffer with him, but he suffered far greater things than all of us combined. He suffered the weight of the sin of the world. He, if he suffered the most and won, you think he's not able to bring you through the less. Be of good cheer, brethren. As Jesus says, Jesus has shown us that there is none greater. He's faced every foe that's out there and beaten every single one. He's proven it. He showed he's greater. He has experience to back it up. And so will we. We will be able to say by experience that faith in Christ gets you to the end. What you go through will be hard for you, but it will never be too hard for him. And because of that, he can bring you through with your faith still intact. Amen.